What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. I am just wrapping up a couple last things on the lightning here and I figured I should pick up the camera and share with you guys some of the stuff that I've found. So, you know, when you're getting the truck all back together and it's been a long time since I've been messing around with this thing and uh, getting kind of intimate with it, uh, there's a couple gremlins that uh, I kind of alluded to in the feature video on this truck and while well, I'm going to show you guys some of the gremlins that I've found here today. The first thing, and I kind of wish I had the camera on earlier, was the truck would randomly not start and once running, sometimes it would just shut off. Now, if you're kind of going through the basics, you would think, okay, fuel pump, or maybe you just run and think maybe the computer's bad, bad grounds. So I checked the basics. Grounds were all there. You could hear the fuel pump priming. And when the truck would shut off, it almost just sounded like you were turning the ignition off. Just like all of a sudden, no spark gone. It wasn't like it would stutter, like it was losing fuel or any of those things. So I had to think about what did we connect and what was disconnected when we did the motor swap. And the first thing that kind of went to my mind was, well, maybe the crank trigger sensor or the crank sensor, sorry, was not plugged in all the way, or maybe there's something wrong with it. And then I remembered that the connector for the AC compressor, the way that that loom is routed is very close to the pulleys. And the connector for the AC actually had a little bit of belt contact. And I think it was a result of when the tensioner blew and the belt went you know, sideways and everything else that it might have been the cause for that connector. But, well, what does the AC connector and wiring have to do with the crank sensor? Well, they share the same wire going down into that area. If you see this black wire right in that area there, that's going down by the valve cover behind the uh, receiver dryer for the AC and then down well, that wire has the AC connector in it and the crank sensor wire. So upon further investigation, I wiggled this wire, the truck could start, I'd wiggle it some more, the truck would stall. So I unplugged everything and uncovered all the tape and the looming and everything and found the root cause to my problem. So again, I didn't have it on camera because, well, I was just kind of messing around and I don't always have the camera on. But I did take a picture so I could send it to uh, Mr. Notorious. So I'll put the picture here so you guys can see it. And yeah, that was the, the problem. So quite an easy fix. You know, I cut the wire and peeled back some of the shielding, soldered the joints back up, wrapped everything properly, and made sure that you know all of even the, um, the almost like tinfoil uh, conducting shield, made sure that was all wrapped back up and around everything, and then taped the shit out of it and uh, got it back together so that everything is good to go and I'm sure we won't have any more problems there. So aside from that, I decided, well, I might as well as go in and get my new head unit installed. So I got this really nice doubled in Sony head unit and was going through the wiring. So the gentleman, the South African gentleman who had bought the truck off me in Dubai, he got it with a really nice stereo. Like I had JBL six by nines in the doors. I think they might still be in there. I might pop the door panel off so I can see. And I had those, had a nice five channel amplifier and JBL sub, an old Sony single din head unit because way back then double dins were just starting to become a thing. So. Needless to say, when he had the truck and before he sold it, I think he punked the stereo out of it and uh, it ended up with this really old and archaic Pioneer amp. So I took this guy out. So this Pioneer 760 watt amplifier and uh, looks like it's a four channel and you can bridge it down. Probably did its job back in the day, but it's big, it's bulky, and it was just sitting behind the driver's seat. It wasn't even Velcroed down, needless to say. And I've been going through all of this wiring, 
which you can see right here on the floor, all of this tape. And this is the not true 3M tape. This is the Dubai special electrical tape that is super, super sticky, especially after it's been out in the heat. Uh, it's just a nightmare to deal with. So what did I find? I had a nice amp wiring kit in this truck. And instead we have this like solid wire, maybe 12 gauge, 10 gauge, probably 12 gauge that has a joiner in it even. So it's not even solid. And the worst part is like when they took the wiring kit out of the truck, they actually left the fuse block. Like, I don't know who does this. So this would have been the original kit that I had. Bosch man, high quality, eight gauge. Here's the fuse block and look, they put this blue stuff on the other side. So thankfully they kept the fuse block in place because well, I don't know how trusting I am of this wire that has multiple joiners in it. You see it's run all the way over here and down through. I don't know what they did. Um, you can see they even did a nice nifty little ground, ground wire there as well. And a whole bunch of old RCAs and whatever else and this Pioneer sub that doesn't fit right. You can see the cover for the sub is hitting the bulkhead of the back here. Man, I just took the door panels off. I took that speaker out. It was one of my original JBLs and I was like, okay, not too bad, a little dusty. I'm going to just at least clean it out, take the passenger side off and I get this Pioneer speaker on that side. Hardware different on both doors. So whoever took the door panels off messed up all the hardware. I guess the speaker must have been blown at some stage because well, they don't match. So needless to say, I'm gonna be hunting for another set of six by nines and get these swapped in. And uh, hopefully Amazon Prime's got something that uh, can get me something tomorrow because I really don't wanna leave my door panels off too long. Oh, Amazon's here. All right, nothing like seeing the old Amazon truck. So I've been just trying to get some things ready here for the lightning. It is the next next day because yesterday Amazon went down and I'm assuming all of the delivery drivers had no idea what they needed to do for yesterday. So um, all my stuff got delayed by a day. So hopefully everything that I need will show up. I was actually just testing out the wiring on the door side mirrors because I wanted to see if the 01 and up style mirrors that have the built-in turn indicator. So if you can see that little ear sticking out there with the lens on the edge. So I wanted to see if those, if you plug them right in, if the turn signals work and sure enough they do. So it is literally a plug and play install. So I'm going to get some color match paint I'll scuff the caps down, I'll get them sprayed so that that way uh, not only will it kind of give the truck a little bit of an updated look, we'll also solve this problem of the peeling paint on my mirror here. So won't be uh, too big of a deal. I'll get some color match paint, I'll get some clear coat, just rattle can them. It'll look pretty good in reference to the rest of the truck. As like I said in my previous video, all this stuff is faded and pretty much satin now. So. One other little upgrade that I did, you can see I got the LED third brake light up in there, which I was really excited for that. Those things are like gold now. So uh, Rob at the parts farm actually had one laying around and hooked me up with that. And then I got the two side mirrors as well. Let's go get this Amazon package as uh, the van is left. So Dale was down here uh, for a better part of a week and a half or so collecting a bunch of Chevy parts as that's what he does is gets southern beds cabs fenders all that focuses on square bodies and old gen 1 uh, gen 2 dodges so if you guys are interested in any of those parts you can always look him up at heritage customs that is the shop that i was working out of when i was up in canada so he picked up this truck and it wasn't running and he didn't have enough room to bring it back of course, I wasn't overly thrilled about it because I have a Chevy in my driveway, but I have this feeling 
And Dale actually mentioned it. He's like, do you ever notice all these guys that you deal with, with all their fox bodies, usually have an old square body laying around? So you guys are going to have to validate that. Needless to say, I didn't want it just sitting here being an eyesore or, I don't know, a driveway ornament. So I went through and I managed to get this thing running. So you can see my trusty little gas tank is uh, this guy right here. So we're actually almost out of fuel, but we should actually have enough. And these old hoods, they all buckle. Sp sprayed the crap out of it with uh, some PB blaster. We're okay. So let's see if this little girl will fire up and uh, we'll cruise it down, collect our packages. Got the old vice grips on the window crank. I think I might need to adjust the timing a little bit. Alright guys, the goods are here, got some LED bulbs, got the proper install mounting kit for the head unit and the dash. We got a Planet Audio 1500 watt amplifier that comes with the 8 gauge wiring kit, so we're going to be running this as well. And then got a brand new set of Infinity 6x9 speakers that will go on the doors. So. All of this together should be quite a nice little upgrade in the truck. We'll get rid of all this old wiring that's here. And I'm going to use this horrible power wire that was run. I'm going to use this to fish. Well, here's one area that I'll use the old wire, the new wire through. Nice, quick and easy like that. You can see what they did here. Like, unbelievable. Who does this? So just a little hint guys, when you're routing your wire, make sure you're aware of any other objects because what I did here is passed it through here and I got it through the grommet and the firewall. I poked a hole and uh, got actually used that old 10 gauge blue wire, taped the 8 gauge onto it, sprayed some WD-40 and pulled it right through. The old wire, they didn't even poke through the grommet. They actually knocked the grommet out of place and had a big gaping hole because the grommet wasn't placed properly. So we went ahead and fixed that. The only thing that I forgot to do was uh, make sure the orientation of my cabling here. So I'm actually just gonna pop this guy off the firewall here. So allow me to run the cable behind it like that. Do that. Pull this through. There we go. power wire there. I'm going to go ahead and run this guy up a nice, tuck it in, up in along the firewall, get it down the kick panel, run it down along the underside of the carpet here. We don't need to worry about the speaker wire. Speaker wire and power wire can be run together. 
because there's no signal going through that. That's just pure voltage that's going to your speaker from the amplifier. And again, we're not even using it right now. That's just there for a later date. I am gonna go ahead, cut out this old remote wire. We'll run our new remote wire down as well with the power wire and get it back to the back here. Got the six by nines installed. Uh, for anyone who's curious, the factory size is in fact a five by seven but you can make a six by nine work. You just gotta kind of roll the edges of the door a little bit. So if you don't wanna do any modifications to your door, five by sevens, otherwise you can get a six by nine in. And you do wanna make note, uh, these tweeters here are actually on a little bit of an angle. So I made sure that they're facing towards the individual and not facing forward in the dash. So we've got the amp all hooked up. Things aren't all tucked and tidied yet going to wait until we do a little test here. So I'm going to plug everything in, make sure everything turns on and see how things sound. All right, guys, so everything tested out great. Did some sound adjustments and really happy with the way that everything is sounding, subs working all that good stuff. So now it is cleanup time. So I'll be uh, installing the mounting plate in, getting the head unit installed properly, wrapping up all my wiring, and the door panels are gonna be left off because I need to do the mirrors. All right, guys, back in the truck here. So the one thing, if you guys haven't installed in uh, a Lightning or F-150, you actually gotta butcher a lot of material out here. Now, somebody had done this before me. I had a normal single din head unit back in the day in this truck so you gotta cut a bunch of stuff out there and you get these install plates i actually had to hone out these holes a little bit to get the screws to fit properly and all this ends up doing is being like a pressure fit snap so this will clip into the side here once you push your head unit in so you want to get those on and then there's a trim ring that goes on the outer side of this so I'm just going to route my wires and uh, we'll get this guy clipped in Clipped in, and then you get this trim plate, which you take the top screws out of your climate controls, and it just fits over everything like this. There we go. All right, guys, so if you were skeptical, in my last video, when I was talking about taking sandpaper to your suede, check this out. You guys are wondering what grid I used? 150. I'm going to grab the vacuum real quick and then you'll see the results for yourself. So a little bit of block sanding or should I say foam sanding or suede sanding of your seat can go a long way. A little bit more left here to do but you guys get the idea. So cool little tip for y'all today. All right guys a little windy today so um, I've created this cocoon of a spray booth for the side mirrors in the back of the old square body here. So I've gone ahead, I've masked them up, I've sanded them down, I feathered out all the stone chips and everything else that was in there because there was actually quite a few in this black mirror. Uh, the DSG one was pretty clean except for a spot on the other side over there. Uh, so I sanded everything down with 320 grit sandpaper, got everything nice and smooth, feathered out. I'm gonna use some filler primer here using the whole Duplicolor line. No, not sponsored, not endorsed. It's just what you get at O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Advanced Auto, Part Source, any of those guys, and what's readily available. So got the um, silver YN 
Duplicolor match paint. So this is supposed to be the color of my truck. Uh, some clear coat and going to go ahead, spray on some primer. Piece of tape. There we go. I got it. You guys see that? Maybe. All right, guys. So I brought these out after they uh, started to tack up into direct sunlight, so that they can get ultimate curing in and express. They look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead, get those and um, start putting them on the truck and they can finish curing on there. I'm obviously going to have to be careful about installing them because the paint isn't fully cured, but well, I'm a little impatient. All right, guys, time to wrap up the last mod of this lightning and that is the dome light. I have got some LEDs up in here. Note, you do have to pinch the little tabs down so that they make a good connection on either end of the bulb. So I just had some needle nose pliers on there. Make sure all our switches work. Beautiful. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for my 2000 SVT Lightning. Just doing those little tiny details, those things that make driving your truck or your car a little bit more enjoyable every time that you get into it. You can see how bright those LEDs are shining, how nice they look. And now is actually a good time to show you guys the fog lights because I went ahead and did the little fog light switch mod, which throws on your fogs with your parking lights. So I went with the ice blue fogs trying to, you know, kind of have a little bit of a contrast with the tip detch coupe in the back there that has the blue headlights. So something a little bit different and I really like the way that it turned out. So thank you guys for following along as always in this video and part of my journey and all these vehicles that I'm tinkering with. So thank you for your support until next time. We'll see you soon.